बार थैंक यू फॉर वॉकिंग अस और टू दिस ग्रुप वर्क हमारे की चैलेंजिंग पर थैंक यू फॉर स्टेइंग विद अस ऑल द टाइम और थैंक यू फॉर द सीरियस और इंटरेस्ट टू वर्क एंड थैंक यू फॉर द स्मार्ट एंड फ्रेश प्रोग्राम और हाउ फर्स्ट टू बी फोकस मैकिंग सेफ और टू बी केयर सो वी कैन कम बैक टू स्कूल और वर्क तो फर्स्ट लिसन टू डॉक्टर फिलिस चाकुवा so we can learn about you more. Dr. Lee, his name again. I have a, a question to start my sermon. I'm asking you, and this is a question of curiosity. And when I say curiosity, please do not think about the mission on Mars. It's a very simple question. What was the theme of my sermon last semester? If you say, I didn't hear, but in your heart, if you say wisdom, that's right. The title of my sermon or the theme was about wisdom in the Bible. Wisdom in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible. How do they understand wisdom? And the foundational element in the Hebrew wisdom, it is the fear of the Lord. Would you please, all of you, say the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord. In fact, there are so many elements incorporated in it, but for them, the foundational element, essential element for wisdom, for Hebrew people, according to the Old Testament, it is the fear of the Lord. And then we say the second dimension is to know how to live in harmony with nature. If people do not know how to live in harmony with nature, they, they lack wisdom. And I've talked about that um, last semester. Wisdom, one, it deals with the everyday life situation. It's not a theory, it's not an in-depth analysis of anything, but it is dealing with situations that we are facing every day in our life. People who are able to know how to deal the situations of their life, we call them wise. And then we say it is a crown of knowledge. There are many kinds of knowledges, but I say a crown of knowledge is wisdom. And then a problem solving skill. Well, another term, nowadays we talk a lot about problem solving, right? And that is another name for wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I have already mentioned this one. If you read throughout the book of Proverbs from chapter 1 verse 7 and also almost in every chapter, it talks about the fear of the Lord. How a person can be wise while he or she is living here on earth. And that involves always Yahweh or God. Today, why I'm telling you this one is I am continuing telling you about one dimension of wisdom. So I think like as a continuation of what I have been saying last semester. Humility is also as one dimension of wisdom according to the Bible. If we go and read the Bible, we'll find out this one. And if, in fact, I have a specific uh, Bible verse that we are reading today. Today, I will focus on humility. Humility is coming from wise people. It is a dimension of wisdom. I'm pretty sure all of you have your smartphone, right? Most of us, if not all of us, have smartphone. But our smartphone is not a wise phone. There is a big difference between being smart and being wise. And I ask the question, why our phone is a smartphone, but it's not a wise phone. When I was a second year student in school, in university, I had my first handphone. It was really big, this much big, very heavy. You just charge it, you can use it like for two weeks without charging again. You know why? It's because you only make a call and receive call. No Facebook, no YouTube, no SNS, nothing. And sometimes we joke, we can use that as a weapon to defend ourselves because it's really heavy. Throughout time, 
our handphones, cell phones uh, e uh, evolved. And as you can see here, this picture shows the evolution of our handphone. And the first one you see here, it's not a smartphone. It's just a mobile phone. But throughout time, somewhere, our handphone started to be smart. Now the question that I want to ask is, yes, our phones are smart, but why they are not wise? Why smart, but not wise? I have mentioned some of the things that I think here. Because wisdom always involves a person. And when I say a person, I am talking about these uh, points that I mentioned here. One, knowledge, both objective and subjective knowledge. Two, feeling or emotion. Wisdom involves feeling or emotion. It also involves will and choice. It involves virtue because it involves this all as a person. Our handphones cannot be wise. Who knows in the future? We'll see what, what will come if we will have wise phone in our hands. But for now, we only have smartphone. I need here a problem solving skill. Let me tell you a story. And I need a wise student to solve the problem. There is a situation here. As you can see here, there is a very beautiful village where a lot of people live together in harmony with nature and with good relationship with themselves. One day, one morning, they send a young man on a mission to go to a far place, to a market, to buy three items and bring them back to the village. But this man, in order to fulfill his mission, He's supposed to uh, cross to the other side of a big river. He needs to swim, go to the market, buy three items, bring them back. And the swimming is not easy. It is a deep water. It's a running water. It's not like swimming in a pool. It's a hard mission. He should fulfill. He needs to be strong. He needs to be wise. What is the situation? He needs to buy one. A tiger? Wow, a tiger from a market? It's just a story. Do not worry. You cannot buy from Imad or Home Plus a tiger, right? Okay. One is a tiger, and the second one is a dog, very beautiful dog, and then the third one is a core. Three items. He has to buy, bring them back. Now, what is the situation? He has to cross again to the other side of the river, to the village. And he needs to protect every item. Now, the man needs to help all three items to cross to the other side of the river. Two, he can swim, but he can't carry at a time more than one item. So that means he needs to swim, carry one thing, swim, go to the other side and come back and do that. Another problem, if the man is not around, the tiger will eat the duck and the duck will eat the core that means they are enemies the man's mission is to take all of them safe to the village how can he fulfill his mission I'll give you two minutes think problem solving we need wisdom here who will answer wow we, we've got one very smart wise <laughs> take the duck first uh -huh. Then take the tiger, mm -hmm. then take the corn. But when, what was the first one? A duck. When he's, okay, he brings the duck, and then? The tiger. He goes back and brings the tiger, and then? Uh -huh. If he goes back, <laughs> the tiger will eat the duck. The duck is dead. <laughs> okay, good try though, thank you so much. Okay. Um, okay, this I'll give for the younger ones. Brave and wise. Okay, go ahead. First is the dog and next on. Uh, First, the man takes the dog to the other side. And second, second corn and he will take, bring the corn. Takes the dog again and burns tiger and take tiger to where is corn and take take the dog. Okay.
Okay, give him a big hand. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jace. Yes, first he needs to take uh, the duck, let's say, and then he goes and bring one and then bring back the duck. That's how it works. Thank you so much. And then now they are safe. Solomon's wisdom is similar with what we discussed here today. Solomon's wisdom, it's a problem solving wisdom. We need that every day. Not only in the social life outside, we even need it in our personal life as a family. Solomon's wisdom, one, it does justice to the society. I am reading a book uh, by uh, Michael Sandals, and that talks about uh, justice. The question of justice has been going on as a discussion point throughout history. It's a hard debate issue. But the thing is, we need to do justice in the society. That needs wisdom. It reveals hidden thoughts of people. Only wise people can reveal that. It settles disputes among people. Life is full of conflicts and disputes among people in relationship, um, uh, between organizations or in a global scale. We have so many disputes to settle. For that, we need wisdom. Solomon's wisdom reveals evil that is not visible. Sometimes the invisible things wisely needs to be exposed. And for that, we need wisdom. And above all, that wisdom saved the lives of the vulnerable. There are so many people, quote unquote, we call weak or uh, vulnerable people. We need wisdom from our leaders. We need wisdom from members of the society. Each member of the society needs to display wisdom in everyday life so that we may create a safe haven for the entire members of the society. James chapter 3, verse 13, uh, the Bible portrays humility is a dimension of wisdom. Let's read it all together if you can see. One, two, three. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by the good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. Show it. If someone has understanding, if someone has wisdom, it needs to be performed. How? By the good life, by the good uh, deeds, actions. And these actions need to be done with humility. Humility that comes from wisdom. Number one, it says good deeds, good action. Number two, it says good conduct. And we need humble spirit. Now, just to give a short definition here, when I say conduct, I am referring to the manner in which a person behaves. In our relationship with people in our social life, wherever we belong to, we need to develop a certain manner in which we behave, relate with people. And when I say humility, it refers to a modest view of one's own importance. Sometimes people have a tendency of valuing themselves too much and that creates a dispute and conflict and humility is wisdom by humbling ourselves willingly humbling ourselves before people we can display uh, especially according to uh, the bible especially if you read the book of matthew chapter 11 verse 28 and uh, uh, 29 we'll read it in a while jesus christ our lord was not arrogant he never exaggerated or he didn't have an exaggerated sense of own importance and ability, but he was humble. He was not bragging. He was never being excessively proud of himself. And instead, Jesus was meek and his meekness comes from willingness. It was not imposed, not forced. There's no power that makes Jesus meek, but his meekness comes from his willingness. Second, he was lowly, not by ability. Uh, 
when we talk about uh, humility, you know, humility, if somebody is imposing something on me and that person or thing or system humbles me, that's not humility. It's forced. I have no choice. But when we say lowly, humility, it's not by ability or lack of ability, but by choice. Jesus chose to be lowly. He became one of us and he became the lowest of all. That's what we call humility. Matthew chapter 11. Let's read it all together. One, two, three. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. From gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. I underlined, Jesus said, learn. Given instruction. Jesus said, one, come to me. That's an invitation. It's a divine call. Two, he said, take my yoke. That's a responsibility. Third, he said, learn from me. As Christians, our most lessons need to come from Jesus Christ. Jesus is radical in every aspect. This, he says, learn from me. What do we learn? The lessons we learn from him, one, he said, be gentle. He said, I am gentle. And he is telling to people who is, who is calling, he said, be gentle. Show a mild, kind, tender temperament or character. And then he said, be meek in heart. There is a big difference between being meek, humble in heart, and acting out, outward. Related with willingness and sub, uh, submissiveness, this one, be meek, means willingly you submit yourself to even those who are called weak or vulnerable. And that there is a promise in the very verse. He said what? You will find rest for your soul. People try to find rest for their soul, for their spirit, in many, many ways, which I don't have objection, but I'm pretty sure the kind of rest for our soul that we get from Christ is incomparable to anything else. Praise the Lord. According to James, the verse that we read, wisdom is demonstrated in a genuine humility. Wisdom is a performance. The verse says, if you have understanding, if you are a wise person, show it in your life. Perform. Wisdom is something to be performed. It's not just a theory. It's not something that only uh, to be written in textbooks, but it's to be performed every day. A person who is truly wise, it's truly humble. And the vice versa. A person who is truly humble is truly wise. These two, humility and wisdom, they are intertwined. They complement each other. Without humility, there's no wisdom, and without wisdom, someone cannot be humble. What do we learn? One, demonstrate the fear of the Lord. What does it mean? Related to our other human beings, the fear of the Lord needs to be I mean, when the Bible says the fear of the Lord, actually, it needs to be performed in our relationship with other human beings. If I say I love God, how can I love God without loving you? If I say I serve God, how can I serve God without serving you? I serve God through serving you. I love God through loving you. Our love for one another is the kind of love that we offer for God. Therefore, we need to demonstrate the fear of the Lord in our relationship with others and not only social relationship with others we also need to relate to the, the entire God's creation in harmony taking care of them and improving the environment and doing anything possible to be good steward for all God's creation second have humility that emerges from wisdom the path of arrogance always attempts to go upward but unfortunately it usually if not always fails to the contrary the path of humility goes downward 
as love does, and they both succeed. That's what we learn from Jesus Christ when he became one of us. While he is God, we learn the path of humility as it is written in the book of Philippians chapter 2. And the third one, let us always recognize and remember one, selflessness is wisdom. Selflessness. That's humility. And to the contrary, selfishness is foolishness. May God help us all every day to perform wisdom that gives priority for God and for our brothers and sisters. Let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this morning. Thank you for you help all of us to belong to this community, beautiful community, where we will uh, serve you, serve one another, love one another, and live our Christian life, Heavenly Father, and perform every virtue that we have received from you. Today, Heavenly Father, we learn that humility is a dimension of wisdom. We want to learn every day, every moment, we need to humble ourselves in your name before you and before people, Heavenly Father. I pray for all uh, JCS community members, including myself, Heavenly Father. May it be known that we are your disciples by loving one another and humbling ourselves before one another. Bless the rest of the time. In your name I pray. Amen.